yesterday we learned about three kinds of concentration units you need to know in this unit. Okay, we said that there are lots of other concentration units, but we're only going to learn about three of them. Previously, I said that you're going to have that you need to know that concentration units always come into in a similar form, where the the um, some measurement for the amount of solute is divided by some measurement for the solvent or some measurement for the solution at the bottom. Okay, and so those three concentration units are one of them is molality. That's the symbol for molality, and that's in moles of solute over kilograms of solvent, okay? And then there's molarity, which we symbolize as a capital M, and anytime we're writing it by hand, we always put a line under it. And molarity is always going to be moles of solute over liters of solution, okay? And then we had percent, or percent concentration. And percent is always, unless you, you're told otherwise, percent is always assumed to be mass of solute over mass of um, solution. Mass of solute over the mass of solution. And then you multiply that times 100. Now, these mass units always have to match, okay? They must be the same. So if the mass of your solute is in grams, then the mass of your solution needs to be in grams. If the mass of your solute is in milligrams, the mass of your solution needs to be in milligrams. Okay, so that's why you have to sometimes do conversions to get from one to the other. Okay. All right. And so you were given, uh, yesterday in class, we worked on a molarity or molar concentration problem. And then last night I assigned you to um, do two homework problems. Okay, and the first problem was you have 4.77 grams of magnesium sulfate. Now, on the problem I wrote out yesterday, I actually wrote the words magnesium sulfate, but you need to know how to um, write the formula from the, the, the name of the compound. So 4.77 grams of magnesium sulfate is dissolved in 100 grams of water. The question yesterday said, what is the uh, molality? Um, but molality means the same thing as molal concentration. So if I write molal concentration, I'm saying the same thing. Molal concentration. All right, so that's the first one. All right, so there's a couple of ways to solve this. We can solve this as three separate calculations, or we can solve it as one big calculation. I'm going to do both for you to show them to you. Now, if you're not, if you don't think you can do the one big calculation, don't try. It's shorter, but you don't have to do it that way. You'll get the same answer. Okay. Let's do it as three separate calculations first. So we're going to start with, uh, well, let's see. Let's, let's back up just a minute and say, what do we need if we're looking for molal concentration? Well, that's this. This is either molality or molal concentration. Okay? This one, this, this M here, is either molarity or molar concentration, okay? Well, this is one we're looking for here. 
So we need to get moles of our solute. And this is the thing that's being dissolved, so it has to be the solute. So we're going to put 4.77 grams of magnesium sulfate over 1 and convert it to moles. Anytime you're converting something to moles, you have to have the molar mass. And the way you've been taught to calculate molar mass in here is you list the, um, each of the um, elements here. Now, I could list sulfur four times. That's perfectly okay. And add them all together. That's fine if you want to do it that way. I'm sorry, what I say? Oh, I'm sorry, the oxygen four times. You could list the oxygen four times, and that's perfectly okay. Or you can get whatever the molar mass, or atomic mass is here, and multiply that by four. Okay, and I'm going to do it that way this time, okay? So, magnesium's atomic mass, in fact, let me just get the periodic table out and just show you real quick. Just in case anybody's still not quite sure, get your periodic table. And there's magnesium, 24.3050. And then sulfur is 32.065. And oxygen is 15.9994. Now, when I get over here to actually the point where I want to add things together, I need to be very careful to keep the digits lined up vertically. Okay, I need to have the decimals lined up in, a, in, a, in basically a perfect column. And so you multiply this times 1 to get the same number, 24.3050, 32.065, and you can already see there is a an empty slot here. We can't write a zero there because that would imply a degree of precision that doesn't exist. And then find my calculator. Here's my calculator. And 15.994 times 4. Oop, I turned it on. And I get 63.9976. Okay, now we want to add these number, these three numbers together. All right, so now that I've lined the numbers up carefully, I can see there's an empty slot in this column. That means I must underline and round off this digit. I use an arrow to show that I'm rounding off. And I'm going to get 120.368. This 6 right here that I'm going to round off makes this an 8. Anything from 5 and up makes the next digit that I'm rounding off, or the digit next to the ones I'm rounding off, round up. 3, 6, 8. And this number is grams. It doesn't have any value if you don't tell them what it applies to. It's grams of magnesium sulfate equals one mole of magnesium sulfate. Then to convert from grams to what I need in um, which is moles, okay, up here, then I need to use this equality statement to build the conversion unit I need to do that. So I want to put the grams of magnesium sulfate on the bottom here because it matches what I'm starting with on the top here. So we can put 120.368 grams of magnesium sulfate on the bottom. We're going to put the other side of the equality statement on the top. Okay, and I can do that because if I have two things that are equal in a fraction like this, the fraction actually equals one. So the math we're going to do here allows me to change the measurement unit without changing the value. And that's what a conversion is, changing the measurement units without actually changing the value. 
So we're going to uh, cancel out these uh, measurement units, just like you cancel out x's and y's in, in algebra. The species can be canceled in the same way. And we're going to do the math to find the answer. We need to do, we need to, uh, do some division here. So it's 4.77. divided by 120.368 and I get 0 0.0396284727 all right and that's moles of magnesium sulfate and we need to round this number off. Now, in addition to subtraction, you round off digits that uh, result from empty slots to the right. In multiplication and division, you round off your digits so your answer matches the measured or calculated number with the least digits. And these two numbers are counting numbers. That's, you don't count those. You don't worry about those. This is a measured number that's a calculated number. So those are the two you're going to look at. You only have three digits here and six here. So we're going to write our final answer in the same number of digits as the le one with the least digits. And the leading zeros here are insignificant. So our first significant digit is this 3. So our insignificant digits start here. We underline those, draw an arrow, and then we write the answer that results from this rounding process, 0 0.0396 moles of magnesium sulfate. Okay? And that's the first part of what we need, moles of solute. Magnesium sulfate is a solute. We found the number of moles we need. Okay. Now we've got to find the other part of what we need. We, we need the, the solvent to be in kilograms. And in the problem, the solvent is in grams. Okay. So we need to convert that. Let's put that over 1. 100.0 grams of H2O. Now, the equality statement we need is something you must memorize. You're supposed to know before you even come to this class that a thousand grams equals one kilogram. Okay? You should know that. Well, that's the equality statement we need because all we've got to do is convert from grams to kilograms. So we're going to put the side of this equality statement that has the same units as our starting amount on the bottom here. And put the other side of the equality statement on the top. And when we do that math, we find we have one, 0 0.1. And how many significant digits do I need here? Four. four of them. The reason we need four is because this zero after the decimal is significant. The two-part rule says that zeros are significant if they follow both the decimal place and the non-zero digit. And the one-part rule says zeros are significant if they're between significant digits. This is significant and this is significant because all non-zero digits are always significant. So these two zeros also then are significant. So we need four significant digits. These, by the way, are counting numbers. Absolute relationships like this are never considered when you're figuring out significant digits. Okay? So now we want to cancel our units. And that leaves us with kilograms of water. So now we have the denominator we need in our concentration unit. Okay, our concentration unit is going to be moles of solute. We have that right down here. Our denominator is, um, numerator is moles of solute. Denominator is kilograms of solute. We have that. So now we're ready to put the two together to get our concentration. So 0 0.0369 moles. of magnesium sulfate goes on the top. Okay, that's our moles of solute on the top. Oh, you're right. Let me do that again then. You're absolutely right. So it's 0 0.0396. I transposed some numbers, didn't I? Thank you for check for not noticing that and checking it for me. Okay? And that goes on top of the uh, kilograms of water, that's what we need for morality.
And then when we do that math, we're going to get 0 0.396, 396 moles of magnesium sulfate over kilograms of water. And moles of solute over kilograms of solvent is molality. So we can write that also as 0 0.0. 0 0.396 mole magnesium sulfate solution. Okay? So I've got a three-step solution to the problem now. One, two, and three. <clears throat> Let's put them all together as one problem. Okay? Instead of starting out with the equation with just this over 1, I know that when I'm done, I'm going to have the solute over the solvent. Okay, that's what I need for molality. I need the solute over the solvent. I can put the solute, that we, the way we have it measured in the problem, and the solvent, the way I have it measured in the problem, and make a fraction out of those two, and then convert from there. Okay, so let's, let me show how that works. I'm going to go ahead and put whatever the solute is, the way it's measured in the problem, on the top of our fraction, 4.77 grams of magnesium sulfate. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and put it over whatever measurement I have for the solvent. And the measurement I have for the solvent is 100.0 grams of water. Okay. Now the first step using this process is the same one I used here. The first um, conversion I used is the same one I used there. You have to calculate the molar mass. You have to have the equality statement. But what I want to do is to go ahead and convert this into moles. So I'm going to put 120 point, uh, grams magnesium sulfate on the bottom and one mole magnesium sulfate on the top the same way I did it up here okay that allows me to go ahead and cancel units and species okay and then we can move on now I always recommend that you cancel as you go All right, cancel as you go how many of you have seen the Disney movie um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs nobody seen us Jacob okay Mackenzie, Mac the knife back there. Yeah. <laughs> Carolyn saw it. All right. Zach, have you seen Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Okay, sit up, please. Okay. All right. What's the song they sing on the way to the mine? Yep. Hi ho, hi ho. Okay. And what is what's the song they sing in the mine? What's the song they sing in the mine? Whistle while you work. Okay. Well, listen. Listen. Shh. Manual. Pay attention. Okay. I'm sorry. At the wrong person. Okay. Okay, listen. Shh. Let's everybody sit up, please. Sit up, please. Last chance. Okay. Um, all right. If you could substitute cancel as you go for that song, for which one you work. Oh yeah, cancel as you go. Anyway, all right. But maybe you won't forget it if you have a dumb song like that. All right. Now look, here's where the difference comes in. So far, we've done the first conversion the same way we did it up here. Okay. But here, I've got grams on the bottom. If I want to get rid of grams and change that to kilograms, I've got to put the 
grams on the top here. So this side of the equality statement goes on the top in this case. And the kilograms go on the bottom. All right? That allows me to cancel grams here. And I'm in one calculation then, in one calculation, I've got moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. Okay? Is this the other way? Yes. And so we can do all of this as one calculation instead of three. And here's what we're going to do in the calculator. We're going to say 4.77 times 1,000. Okay, and then we're going to hit enter. Go ahead and hit enter there. Then we're going to divide by 100. When I hit the divide button, most of your calculators give you, say that we're going to start with the previous answer. Okay? So we're going to divide by 100.0, hit enter again, and now we're going to divide again by this second thing on the bottom, 120.368. Okay, and the answer we get, 0 0.3962847. seven. Two, six, eight, and this is going to be in moles of magnesium sulfate. Over kilograms of water. And that's the solute, that's the solvent. So this is molal concentration. Let's round it off and write, write the answer with molal. So I need three digits because this number has three digits. These numbers right here, this is an absolute ratio. It absolutely 1,000 grams equals one kilogram. So those are counting numbers. We don't use those when figuring out significant digits at all. Okay. This number, this number, and this number, the three we're going to look at for finding our significant digits in this multiplication division problem. And this one has the three least digits, three of them. So I underline everything after the first three significant digits. Draw an arrow, and our answer is 0 0.396. And since moles of solute over kilograms of solvent is molal, we can just write molal and say that's magnesium sulfate solution. Okay? Yeah, you could if you, if you know that's what it is, for sure. But I don't suggest it because we're kind of beginning this process right now, okay? But I wouldn't count it wrong if you did, all right? So that answer is the same as the answer I got right here, okay? So I got the same answer both ways. Now occasionally, occasionally, um, if you do this as one step and somebody else does it as three, they'll get a slight difference. Maybe there, theirs might be like something, for example, like 0 .0, 0 0.397. That's okay. With me, it's okay. All right? Because when you do the calculations and round off at each step like I teach you to do in here, or as I teach you to do in here, you're actually propagating errors. Okay? But since we're most of the way through the semester, and a lot of you are still making rounding errors. I want you to keep practicing rounding off over and over again. Okay? So I would prefer you always round off at each step. It gets really complex when you have to round off after all the steps. Okay? We don't, I don't want you to have to worry about that. Okay? It adds too, many, too much complexity to it. All right, so that's the answer to that one. Now, the other question you're supposed to do is homework. Ask you to take this, these same values here and find the percent concentration. Okay? So find the percent concentration. All right. For percent, then, we need the mass of the solute over the mass of the solution. Now, the problem doesn't give you the mass of the solution. It gives you the mass of the solvent and the solute. Okay, you to find the mass of the solution, you have to add them together. So the mass of the solution is 4.77 grams 
of magnesium sulfate and 100.0 grams of water. Okay? And so the mass becomes 104.77, which we round off because this is an empty slot here. That's the rules for rounding in addition and subtraction. And we get 104.8 grams of magnesium sulfate solution. Well, it doesn't go away. Um, since water is so ubiquitous when we're doing labs, if you don't say that the solvent is water, I mean, if you don't say what the solvent is, then uh, what you're saying by that omission is that water is the solvent. Okay? So if we say magnesium sulfate solution by saying it that way, we are communicating to whoever's reading it or hearing it that water is the solvent. So if you have any solvent other than water, you have to state what it is. Okay, if you we were dissolving this in ethanol, we'd have to say in ethanol. But since we haven't said what it is, then you and I both should understand that this water is the solvent. Okay? All right. Now we're ready to do the actual percent concentration up here. We need the mass of the solute. That's right there. 4.77 grams magnesium sulfate. We're going to divide by the mass of the solution right here. Um, and then we're going to put that in parentheses and multiply by 100. Now, I've told you before, percents are unitless. Percents are unitless, so the units are canceling out. But here's something really important that you pay attention to that you know and you understand. Okay, Kelly, you listening over there? Okay. You cannot cancel out magnesium sulfate with magnesium sulfate solution. Those are two different things. Magnesium sulfate is a solid. It's a crystal. Magnesium sulfate solution is separate ions dissolved in water. It's like canceling out when we're doing those complete and net ionic equations. You can't cancel out things that aren't exactly the same. These aren't exactly the same. Okay? All right, so now we're ready to do that math. So... 4.77 divided by 104.8, hit enter, and then times 100, enter again, and I've got a percentage, 4.5515126718%, let's round off to the correct number of digits, three here and four here, and this 100 is an absolute number. We're going to ignore that. That's like a counting number, okay? You with me, Brandon? Brandon! Hello? Okay, so we want three digits. Underline everything after the first three digits. Draw an arrow, and this is 4.55% magnesium sulfate solution. Okay, and there's your answer for that. Um, that's, I mean, that's, you can do it as two separate operations or one, but you need to be careful because sometimes when you mix operations, I just prefer that you do it separately in your calculator. Sometimes when you mix operations, you forget that, oh, you can't do, you can't mix Subtraction and multiplication. Okay, I just rather you do it as separate operations. Does that make, does that, any of that make sense? Okay. Do your mathematical operations separately, like I did here. It's fine. Okay. Okay, that's fine. You can do this operation and write that down. Okay, which is that's okay, but you don't have to show me that step on the paper. Okay. It's not. It's not a problem if you do. All right. Better to show too much than not enough, right? Because you, you can't lose points by showing me too much. You can lose points by not showing me not enough, okay?